Hello. So this is a pre-lesson for one of your practical on uh, reflection. So the objective of uh, this practical is to actually prove that the law of reflection is true. So the tricky thing about this practical is that uh, in order to prove that uh, this particular law is true, we need to measure the angle of incident and the, uh, and, and the angle of reflection. Uh, however, the tricky thing is that light, as in light rays in real life, it is not like a string that we can uh, hold, touch or measure from. So it becomes kind of uh, difficult for uh, scientists to actually measure this uh, angle of incident in the past because in the past there's no laser beam. So how could scientists uh, <clears throat> prove that this relationship is true uh, when light it is some and when when light is something that you can't touch, you can't hold on to, and you can't measure from. So what they derive, uh, how they do it is that they use this thing called an optical pin. So for this particular uh, experiment, we are going to learn how scientists in the past actually make use of optical pin to trace the light ray out like a line. And uh, from this line, uh, we can then measure the angle and prove that this law of reflection is indeed real. So let's take a look at the apparatus. So down here, what you have is a mirror. So this is uh, actually the mirror from our practical uh, room. As you can see, there's a stand over here. So some of the students will put the mirror like that. But if you put the mirror like that, uh, basically this part of the mirror will be wasted because your pin is only this tall, right? So because of that, uh, the right way of positioning this mirror is like this, okay? Uh, so that you can get a, a wider uh, range uh, whereby the pin can be uh, placed uh, with the reflection inside the mirror, okay? The other thing about this is that uh, this mirror has it is, it is a, a, a actual mirror, of course. As you can see down here, this mirror, right? Uh, I think it is difficult for, um, you know, normal people like us to, to realize that the mirror, right, actually consists of two parts. Uh, the front surface and the back surface. So in a certain sense, if the practical requires you to place the mirror on this line, should you align the front surface like this to the line? Or should you align the back surface to the line? Which one is correct? Like this? Or like this? Which is the correct placement? Should I align the front or should I align the back? So it boils down to the, to the, to the idea that if this line is representing my reflecting surface, then the question is, is the front of the mirror reflecting? Or is the back of the mirror reflecting? So if you take a closer look at the mirror, it actually consists of this glass layer, right? This glass layer is to protect this coating. So this coating behind is black, but in front of it is actually silver in color. And you can see that, you know, I purposely picked the one-off one. Can you see here? That's because the back here, right? Can you see down here? The silver layer over here is now being one of the tip of my thumb. Right? And as a result, without that silvery layer, basically this glass block is like this, it's like transparent. So how, does, how do we make a mirror? It's actually to take a glass block like that and we coat one, one side of the mirror with this silver color coating. And then when we flip it over, the silver color coating will face front and it will act as a mirror and we can. Uh, it is very durable. If you scratch here, you cannot scratch. So since we are on this topic, right, do you remember like a few years ago, there's this uh, Peeping Tom who installed a hidden camera inside the changing room of uh, Uniqlo and, uh, and, 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 and they use a, a kind of like a one-way mirror uh, to, to actually take a secret video of a ladies changing in the changing room. So one way of detecting whether this is a one-way mirror or is it an actual mirror is this. If you place your finger over to the mirror, can you see that actually there is a gap between my finger and the reflection? Can you see there's a gap? I'm actually touching the, the mirror already, but you can see there's a gap. 
So if you can see that there's a gap between your actual finger and uh, and the image like this, can you see there's a gap? Yeah. Uh, it means that you are safe. It is an actual mirror. But if you see that when you when you when you put your finger next to the mirror and there's no gap, right? It means that that is a one-way mirror, meaning that someone behind it could be looking at you or there's a camera behind. Yeah. So for any mirror, right? Actually, uh, it is make of the uh, similar principle. There will be a glass flap. So just remember when uh, the practical asks you to place the reflecting surface uh, over this line, you have to align the back of the mirror to it. So like that, the back of it. So this is correct. Yeah. Okay. But this is wrong. This is wrong. Uh, wrong. 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 If you do this, this is wrong. Okay, because the reflecting surface has to be on the, the, re, the actual reflecting surface is actually this coated layer. Yeah, so if you do this, this way, which is the wrong way, uh, you will have a systematic error. Okay, Ken? Now let's go back to our uh, initial purpose, which is to prove that uh, the law of reflection actually work. And uh, we need an uh, innovative way of uh, proving that. So what we, we, we have to do is like, for example, uh, if we were to, to shine a beam of light from here to here and uh, it hits the mirror, uh, then after that, it will, it will bounce off, right? In order to trace this beam of light, what do we do? Uh, what we do is that we put this object over here. So what happens is that the light from this object will then go to my mirror and bounce out, right? But how do I trace the, the line? I, can, I cannot trace, right? So in order to do that, wait, uh, let, me, let me place this properly first. In order to, to have a line, I need not just one pin, but I have to have two pin. So when I have two pin, then from this pin to this pin, it means that I, I can trace it, right? I can use my pencil and a ruler and then I can, I can put it over here. So for example, now that uh, I get my ruler, I can actually draw this thing over here. Uh, oh, I only have one hand. I try my best. Huh? I'm amazed at my own ability to do this with a single hand. Hoya. Okay, so what I have here is that, oh, I can then use these two pin. And these two pin, because they are in, in a straight line, then I can say that, oh, now I have a ray of light from this object goes all the way into the mirror. So now in order to prove this, I would then need a method to actually trace out what is the reflective light that is coming out from the mirror. And actually at this angle, I think you would have guessed what we are going to do. We are going to put our head at eye level over here. So I'm going to straighten this first, right? Let me straighten this. Right, so when I straighten this, now this is what we call aligning. So if you cannot see the back pin, that means the first pin over here, the front pin, is blocking my vision to the second pin. We say that pin one, this is my pin one, let me write it down, pin one. Pin one is now so-called aligned to my pin two over here because now they are blocking each other right so now how do i trace the light coming out from my mirror now if i look into the mirror i will see the two images happening here this is my image of p2 the further one will be the image of my p1 right so now you can see that these two image is not aligned because they are not overlapping each other what i'm going to do is that i'm going to fix my head over here and I'm going to turn the bot. So I'm going to turn the bot like that. Okay, while putting my head over here fixed. So as I turn the bot, you notice that the two images will align. Okay, down here you can see the back image and the front image, they are not aligned yet, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to align them. Okay, so I'm going to turn the bot until now you can see that the back image and the front image is aligned, okay? So, this thing is inside the mirror and I can't do any measurement inside the mirror, right? Because it is in virtual space. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take, I'm going to take 
a third pin, okay? I'm going to put my head over here. And, now, and I'm going to put my third pin such that the third pin, this guy, is going to block the image inside the mirror. Okay, so I'm going to put it like here. Okay, this is my image of the third pin. Okay, now I have one, two, three pins. That's why I call it the pin tree. So now you look at pin tree. The actual pin tree, please ignore this. This is not relevant to our discussion. Can you see that now pin tree is blocking the image of pin 2 and the image of pin 1. Meaning that now that they are blocking each other, meaning that P3 is in the path of light coming from the mirror to my camera, which is my eyes. So pin 3 is now in, in line with, with the light ray that is reflected from the mirror to my eyes. That's why it is blocking it, ma. Yeah? Then, with this, can I draw a line? I cannot draw a line because there's only one pin. So meaning that I will need the fourth pin, which is here. So we take a fourth pin, and I will put it such that pin 4, the one that I'm holding, is going to block pin 3 and the rest of the light from the reflected image. So now I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to put it far. Okay, nearer to me. The nearer it is, the better. So I'm going to put my head level here. Is it aligned? No, not aligned. There's a gap here. Okay, here looks aligned. Right. So when I confirm, can you see that? Pin 4, pin 3, and image of pin 2 inside the mirror. Image of pin 1 inside the mirror. Okay, can I see? Okay, now they are blocking each other, right? Pin 4. Blocking pin 3. Blocking image of P2, P1. So meaning that now image of P1, when the light comes into my eye, it is being blocked by P3 and P4. In another word, pin 3 and pin 4 are on the line of sight from the image inside the mirror to my eyes. So in another word, these two pin would allow me to trace the beam of light coming from the mirror into my eyes. So now I can use my special jujitsu technique, one hand drawing. Okay, and draw out. Draw out. Draw <laughs> and draw, 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 draw. And now I'm able to trace the ray coming from pin 1 going, just now I push the mirror away, going into my mirror and from the mirror it is being reflected all the way to my camera which is here, which is now my, uh, which is going to be your eyes over here, right? By doing so, I am now able to have my incident ray and my reflected ray traced out. And with here, I can see that my point of reflection Okay, I can put my normal over here for you. Please use your uh, uh, ruler. Okay, and now I can take away all this. Put my ruler here, go and draw. Wow, one hand, uh, really hard to draw, you know. Are you? Okay, but, but you get the idea, right? So after you draw this, you, are, you then can actually find out the angle of incident and uh, the angle of reflection. And you can measure this. And of course, this is just for one case. So how do you prove a law? In order to prove a law, you must at least have a trend data. So what you're going to do is that you're going to put your P1, P2 at different uh, angles and then you're going to trace the pin 3, pin 4. So this method of tracing the uh, reflected ray is actually called the uh, aligning the optical pin method. Okay? So by doing so, you can have like uh, theta 1, theta 2, uh, theta 1, second set of theta, at another, at another angle, bounce out, third, third data, another, that means you shift, and then another data. So you will get like five sets of trend data and you can actually see whether I and R, are they related uh, according to this law. Can? So uh, on the actual practical day, your job is to actually place the mirror, align it with the back surface to the, to the line, 
use two optical pin to, to, to have your independent variable with the different incident ray. Use the, the, the aligning the pin method to actually find out the reflect, to trace out the reflected ray. Okay? Uh, during the practical, when you get your first set of data, okay, what I want you to do is that I don't want you to move at all. And uh, if you see that the teacher is free, I want you to uh, ask the teacher to come to your, to, your, to your table and check that indeed the alignment is correct before you proceed onto the second, third, and fourth, and fifth data set. Now, if the teacher is busy, uh, then uh, just go for the second one, and then you, before the lesson end, you must let the teacher check at least one set of your data. Can? Okay. Uh, have fun in the practical tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.